All right, accounting to kiddos, we're going to kick off accounting to with chapter 17, section 1, which is talking about the vertical analysis of an income statement. Now, I'm hoping that you remember what an income statement is. If not, probably would be a good idea to maybe do a little review of the income statement. Remember, we are still talking about it from a corporation standpoint. So I want to say without a book in front of me that it's going to be in that chapter 15, 16 range. Um, so you might want to go back and look at that a little bit. But to start off, what we're going to do in this section is doing a vertical analysis of that income statement. So at this point, what has happened is our business has created our income statement for whatever financial period that we're going through. So one of the most important parts of an income statement is that we do analysis ratios. And the whole point of that is to measure our relationship from one financial statement item to another. So it's comparing like salary expense to net sales. And everything has a percentage of how much of net sales it makes up on. Now on the other income statement, um, we have vertical analysis ratios that focuses on the ability of our business to earn a profit. And we call those profitability ratios, okay? It's pretty straightforward. Like I said, accountants are not um, super creative in our naming of things. So obviously profitability just says what of these um, financial statement sections generates the most income. So vertical analysis ratios on an income statement are examples of profitability ratios. So remember, we're going vertically in this section. Eventually, we're going to go horizontally, but for now, we're going to look at this vertically. Um, and managers use these to help make business decisions moving forward. So essentially, they're using it as a tool. Okay, and we're trying to set either a target or a standard for each ratio. So we're going to have certain ranges that we want to make sure that our ratios are falling into. We call that standard a benchmark. Okay, we want to make sure you might you might have heard that before. Um, companies or managers talking about did we hit the benchmark or did we hit the target or did we hit the standard? Okay, it's very important for them. That's how they set their goals and that's how they know if they are making progress or not towards those goals. So factors that are going to determine what benchmarks we hit. Okay, so one of the things that we look at are the ratios from the prior fiscal period. So we look at the time period before that, whether it's a month or a year, we want to make sure that we're comparing. We also are going to look at standards that have been published by similar businesses in our industry. So if we were in um, the steel industry, we would also look at other companies that do the same kind of work that we do. Okay. Another place where we could find benchmarks is going to be listed in our business plans. Typically they say, you know, we want to hit this benchmark by this time. Okay. One of the things that can really affect benchmarks are unexpected events. Now that could either be um, things like our economy taking a hit, whether that's from interest rates, um, maybe something that's happening between other countries that's affecting our economy. It could be something where there's a natural disaster, whether that's a flood or an earthquake that ends up affecting our business, that can affect our benchmark ratios as well. So when we're looking at doing vertical analysis, one thing that we're going to do is we're going to do something called a comparative financial um, statements. And what that does is that's just looking at multiple fiscal periods. So maybe we're looking at all 12 months of a year. And then when we analyze how those um, statements are changing over time, we call that a trend analysis, okay? And just as a reminder, net income after federal income tax as a percentage of net sales, we refer to that as profit margin. So there are quite a few terms in this chapter as we get back into things. So you just want to make sure that you do your terms and questions and make sure that you are feeling comfortable with the um, terminology that we're using. So here's an example of a um, comparative income statement. So you can see here we have the current year. Remember, we start with net sales. We have our cost of merchandise sold, which gives us our gross profit. 
and then we list all of our operating expenses where we get income from operations. If there's any other revenue, we look into that. And then also we have to take out our federal income taxes before we get our net income. So here's our current uh, income statement listed here. We also have the prior year so we can do some comparison. Okay, remember that since we're going to be doing a vertical analysis, everything is going to get compared to net sales. You can see that net sales is listed at the 100%. If you were to take any of these numbers, like for example, if we took gross profit, which is 368,000 and change, and you divided that by the 626,000 for net sales, that's where we're getting that 58.8%. So when we do vertical analysis, we're always going to be comparing to net sales. So one thing we want to look at specifically is our gross margin, and that is gross profit as a percentage of net sales. So here, the one I was just pointing out to you, um, where we took our gross profit and divided it by net sales, we call that our gross margin, or it happens to be here 58.8%. Okay, That ratio might also be referred to as gross profit margin, so just be aware of that. It's just gross profit divided by net sales. Um, if for some reason we have a not so good looking gross margin, I'm just going to flip back here. Remember, that's this one showing our gross profit. Okay. If we are having issues with the, that number, some things that our managers might try to do are trying to increase our sale, um, the, excuse me, the number of sales that we make, or it might be just increasing the price which obviously is going to affect this number, making it higher, which would obviously increase our gross profit. Um, the other thing that we can try to do is decrease what we spend to create the merchandise, which would obviously decrease our cost of merchandise sold, which would make our gross profit bigger, obviously meaning that this percentage would be higher as well. So those are just a couple of things uh, or actions, I should say, that um, management might take to try to increase our gross margin. It's one of those vertical analysis ratios that um, many businesses look at, particularly stockholders, to see if it's worth investing in that company. Um, another vertical analysis that we're going to look at is something called the rate of return on sales. So what we're looking at here is the income from operations as a percentage of net sales, which is what we call operating margin. Um, so what we're taking is our income from operations, and we're going to divide that by our net sales. So they can fit the whole income statement up here, but just remember that net sales is always our first amount up top. Okay, You might hear this referred to as the rate of return on sales. Pretty common to hear it referred to that is that. And then we also have our total operating expenses, which is called our operating expense ratio. Here is where we take that total operating expenses where we've listed everything from like our salary expense to utilities expense, rent expense, all of those have been listed. We take that total and divide that by net sales. That's called our operating expense ratio. So just remember all of these that we're talking about, we've talked about our gross margin, we're talking about operating margin, and we're also talking about our operating expense ratio. So there's quite a few ratios that we're going to be dealing with here in Chapter 17. Um, if we have a not so good operating expense ratio, okay, that's where we're looking at these numbers here, where either our income from operations is too low or our total operating expenses are too high. What we need to do to get those down is try to decrease or reduce our operating expenses. So you might try to look for um, maybe a cheaper um, provider for maybe your internet or your cell phone, you know, trying to decrease costs that way. Maybe you're looking into, um, you know, doing a freeze on salaries if salaries or expenses too high. Um, you also might think about modifying the benchmark. Okay, that's where we're going to look at not only how did we do last fiscal period, but also looking at how are other industry members doing. Okay, maybe the benchmark can be modified. Um, also, as always, just like we did beforehand, trying to increase our net sales is obviously going to help us with our um, uh, 
unfavorable operating expense ratio. So if that's still not where we want it to be, we can always try to boost our sales. That's one of the best bets um, to try to raise those ratios. So I'm going to show you how to do the work together. Um, this actually, I need to modify this here. Um, I'm going to be having you in accounting to doing your application problems at the end of the chapter. Not that you can't also work on it during class, but I'm going to give you a day um, to work on your application problems just because you might have to work at a little bit of a slower pace because I'm not going to be able to be directly instructing you, so I just want you to be aware of it. So um, do tonight will be your work together, 17-1, and you're on your own, 17-1, okay? There obviously are terms and questions, but just like we've always done before, your terms and questions are due at the end of the chapter, which I believe will be on um, the following Tuesday. So just be aware of that.